Great. Well, welcome everyone to SWAG Clinical Trials Partnership, SWAG CTP's update forum. I'm Kathy Albane, SWAG Vice Chair for Clinical Trials Partnerships, and I am in my institution today, uh, Loyal University of Chicago Stritch School of Medicine, Cardinal Bernardine Cancer Center, where I am a practicing medical oncologist. Um, I am here because of my 98-year-old mother will not allow me to travel outside my immediate area. So this is what the first of, no, second of SWAG in-person meetings in 30 years of my career in SWAG that I have had to miss being live and I miss seeing all of you in Seattle. But welcome um, the others uh, virtually. I think the meeting split so far is about 50-50. So I am presenting this update forum on behalf of my um, wonderful uh, team in administration and operations. Um, Casey Dawson, who's Director of Administration for SWAG CTP, and Crystal Miwa and Michelle Maxim, who are Clinical Trials Project Managers for SWAG CTP, and Chrissy Laubach, uh, Protocol Program Manager for SWAG CTP. I acknowledge SWAG CTP's executive leadership, scientific advisory, and as I just said, operations expertise uh, shown on this slide, the CTP executive committee, uh, all the disease chairs and research modality chairs in SWAG, ex executive officers who serve as partners and advisory to SWAG CTP, the scientific advisory board who will be meeting uh, in closed session tomorrow, uh, comprised of about 25 SWAG experts across all disease sites. And then uh, the operations and administrative staff I've already alluded to, and in addition, Dana Sparks, who directs uh, SWAG operations. Well, our agenda today um, is, is shown here. I'll give a brief overview of SWAG CTP. It will be a review for some of you and others of you, this is the first time. So I'll try and bring everybody to the same starting point, so to speak. I'll review the Preferred Partnerships Program, PPP of the CTP. I'll uh, update you on joint CTP industry study development and our current and future trial menus. Uh, come to infrastructure and e-research platform, and then end with milestones and open discussion. On this slide, I show all the different roles for SWAG CTP. Here, uh, federally funded SWAG trials, which we are not addressing today, is the mechanism where SWAG CTP obtains and distributes industry funding including drug costs and other support. This has been ongoing and successful for many, many years. And Casey Dawson is integrally involved in running this side of CTP in collaboration with uh, the NCTN um, committee chairs. Uh, but what we will address is the newer role for SWAG CTP whereby we run rigorous scientifically relevant industry supported 100% industry supported trials. They can be either single SWAG committee initiated studies or the preferred partnerships program. So the single SWAG committee initiated studies was previously named CTI, clinical trials initiatives. Those of you in SWAG for a while will remember that mechanism. Uh, these were not one-off trials like an investigator initiated trial, but initiated by SWAG committees. And then we are keeping this in CTP um, as a single SWAG committee initiated study mechanism because we found that if successful, a broadened collaboration may develop with other agents and designs within the company. And we have one example of that ongoing already. The newest mechanism is the Preferred Partnerships Program, PPP. It allows pipeline access uh, or complex multi-arm platform designs. There is joint scientific development and governance with the industry partner. 
and it has a dedicated CTP infrastructure and process, which we'll show. Importantly, these trials should have no overlap or competition with active federally funded uh, studies. But there's more than enough to go around, as all of you know. Um, many of our great ideas, just for whatever reason, often funding and lack of resources at the federal level cannot be done. So we're thrilled to have this new opportunity to allow our sites and investigators to have more um, trial options of great scientific interest. So therefore, the SWAG CTP establishes and administers scientific preferred partnerships between SWAG and industry. And this is specific to the preferred partnership side of SWAG CTP. It's the mechanism where we uh, are 100, 1,000 plus member institutions can collaborate directly with industry as a preferred partner. We develop study platforms of mutual interest phases 1B, 1B2, randomized 2, 3, and even a registration option if appropriate. SWAG CTP facilitates testing of new agents or novel combinations, either across disease sites or broadly within a disease, and flows through dedicated CTP channels for study design, approval, development, contracting, monitoring, analysis, and reporting concurrently with industry and utilizes outstanding SWAG operation statistics and data management we're all used to uh, working with over the years. So as I mentioned, this is a joint study design process and conducted with SWAG committees and industry partners. So in parallel, and I'll toward the end get to this in much greater depth, but there's a scientific and clinical discussions over time, budget and contracting negotiations and protocol development and study build utilizing statistical centers. So um, uh, this allows for a more efficient development process by having these proceed in parallel. Well, the next portion of this update is um, to uh, discuss some of the platform designs that are in development. Now, the caveat here is still true as it was at our last meeting. Unfortunately, uh, we are unable to reveal compounds and details of study designs in open sessions per request of most of our active collaborators. Uh, we're getting closer. I would anticipate by our next meeting, we will have protocols and um, formal registration uh, at the NIH.gov uh, site for our studies, and we'll be able to show them more in open forum. But we do have uh, one or two that I will be able to say more about, thank you, thanks to those companies who've allowed uh, greater depth of discussion in this open session. So focusing on the left, first I list our active industry collaborations. And these are either pipeline, platform, whoops, whoa, I didn't do anything there. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> um, these are either uh, pipeline, platform, or subtype um, driven studies, and we'll get into this uh, shortly. But we have one in acute lymphocytic leukemia, uh, another in MPN, MPN, MDS overlap, or CMML, one in breast cancer adjuvant, and one in breast cancer metastatic, neoadjuvant bladder, non-small cell lung cancer, advanced, head and neck squamous cell, and cutaneous squamous cell cancers. We are um, in discussions with the CNS working group on some potential collaborations. I'll say a word about digital engagement later on, but we are actively discussing opportunities um, with industry uh, for non-therapeutic uh, initiatives, immunotherapeutics, GI malign malignancies. And there are three companies right now we are setting up calls to discuss uh, potential pipeline collaborations. So we announced at the fall meeting, our first CTP preferred partnership with, was with Novartis, is with Novartis. Uh, 
We're still excited about that. The master agreement has been signed. Uh, this will allow us to um, delve into collaborative projects, um, either platform, basket, other designs, disease specific, disease agnostic, in uh, four franchises, uh, solid tumor, hematology, immunotherapeutics, and early therapeutics, rare cancers. Multiple joint calls are planned this year, which will involve specific committee chairs germane to the particular um, area of study uh, and so other SWAG scientific leaders will be included along with um, the industry leads for those areas. So we've already started along this path and their pipeline is um, deep and exciting. And so we, we are very much eager to begin exploring um, uh, further. But we have two platform trials jointly designed already with mature capsules in the hematology space. <clears throat> then with uh, Company X, uh, we have a collaboration with a lung committee for a platform study in non-small cell lung cancer with typical EGFR mutations. The project design is a CT DNA-based decision-making uh, project with multi -cohort, multiple cohorts involving two agents. And this uh, design has been finalized. We have a le letter of collaboration intent in place. And this capsule, which is very mature at this stage, will be submitted soon to peer review by SWAG CTP's Executive Review Committee which functions like an NCI steering committee might function on the federal side of what we do in SWAT. Then uh, with AstraZeneca, we've been permitted to name them as a collaborator on a platform design in metastatic ER positive HER2 negative breast cancer, who are being treated on first line, about to be treated on first line standard of care aromatase inhibitor plus CDK4-6 inhibitor. This is a molecular match uh, design and the study flow is based on ctDNA status. If rising, the patients will be randomized to multiple parallel arms with investigational agents and combinations. And if not, or if responding, there will be uh, an observational uh, group uh, to gain information that doesn't exist yet on what happens over time if you just continue a standard care. Uh, we have a letter of collaboration intent and uh, very happy to announce we do have a collaborator for the CTDNA studies in place. And in fact, we had a call earlier this morning uh, with the group together with AstraZeneca and us and the joint capsule development is in progress. Company Y in collaboration with the Head and Neck Task Force um, of Early Therapeutics and Rare Diseases Committee of SWAG uh, has a platform design in metastatic squamous of the head and neck and metastatic cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. Cohorts are defined by the type of and the degree of response to prior systemic therapies, if any. There are parallel phase two cohorts with two agents. Uh, we have a letter of collaboration intent uh, in place and uh, the capsule has moved along very quickly. And in fact, will be reviewed this month by the CTP executive review committee. Again, functioning as an NCI steering committee peer review would function. Then with Genentech, uh, we have a, a study in first-line muscle invasive uh, neoadjuvant setting for bladder cancer. It's subtype driven with parallel cohorts. Uh, the letter of collaboration intent is received. We've had recurring operations and scientific calls, joint proposal development and um, agent selection is underway. And Genentech said it is fine for us to show you this. Uh, with not, it's obviously still in draft form, but just focusing here, we have 
Tempus as our collaborator for RNA-C to determine tumor subtype based on the TCGA uh, for um, designations in three categories, luminal papillary, basal, and non-luminal or non-luminal non and non-basal. And each of these uh, cells are randomized one-to-one -to, -one to neoadjuvant chemotherapy as the control. Or here for luminal papillary, atezolizumab plus an FGFR inhibitor still being uh, selected um, in this arm, atezolizumab plus tiragolumab, I hope I got that right, uh, <laughs> Genentech's anti-tigit antibody. And then in the other group, uh, atezolizumab plus neoadjuvant chemotherapy will be the experimental arm. Patients then move on to radical cystectomy. And along the way, of course, there's blood for ctDNA and uh, radiology CT MRI evaluations here preoperatively uh, as well. And then following the ctDNA. And the primary outcome here with pathologic complete response these are randomized phase two trials. Uh, there will be a, a total per subtype, 194 patients here, here, and here, 97 for each of these arms. And depending on how this proceeds, we are then set up to bring in new agents um, along the way as, as some arms close here and uh, keep this going, hopefully as a true platform trial. <clears throat> And then lastly, um, we have uh, our first SWOG CTP registration trial collaboration uh, in discussion phase with AstraZeneca right now. And this is in the post neoadjuvant triple negative breast cancer uh, space where there is residual disease at time of definitive surgery. Similar to those of you who participated in SWOG 1418, similar population. Uh, that's all I can say about this, unfortunately, today, but stay tuned for more information soon. And certainly, if we get far enough along before the next meeting, um, your sites will receive information on how to participate, because this will be a different model, given that it will be run by the sponsor as a registration trial. And then I mentioned earlier, uh, briefly, that we do have a CTP task force to explore emerging opportunities with non-pharmaceutical interventions and tools. These could be standalone trials or combined with therapeutic studies. We have a task force that has met several times and actually already in some discussions with AstraZeneca via the SWOG Digital Engagement Coll Committee collaborations. And a number of proposals have been brought forward both by the company and by um, us, for example, there's an opportunity to look at something on our planned trial uh, with them in the uh, metastatic space. Uh, and I can't say much more about that now. And then also some standalone ideas have been put forward. I don't know if Dr. D's on uh, meeting that immediately follows this one, digital engagement, will say more or not about that. But this is also another place where SWAG CTP collaborations with industry um, can go. So in terms of our milestones, um, I, I've obviously alluded to them along the way, but I say progress with process because the more um, I am into this role, I started this um, a few years ago, um, with a very simple diagram of how we were going to work, and it becomes more complex as we go on the back end, where you may not see what goes on, but where progress is so critical to keep this going efficiently. So one area, and I think uh, Casey Dawson, Nathan Erickson, and many others, Casey, I'm not mentioning here, who worked on, on this uh, aspect of, of the e-research program, uh, in terms of how just you will, you will be not, you will be notified if you're a SWAG site of any CTP study that's close to activation, and you will have by then heard uh, probably a lot about it in your disease committee work. But if not, we will announce it uh, in a formal way so 
we can determine interest and accrual potential. There will be a, probably a brief feasibility questionnaire that, that we will design and get out to the sites to help us ascertain. Obviously, we can't open it at all 1,000 sites because, again, we're going to fund the sites through industry funding, and uh, the budget would be uh, impossible. But on the other hand, there are many sites um, out there that we can include, and all of those who have major interest and accrual potential should be able to be accommodated. We will use the uh, WCG, formerly known as Western IRB, as a central IRB for CTP studies. Banking um, standard operating procedures are being worked on. We will utilize the SWAG bank nationwide, institutional banks if necessary for specific expertise, company banks as well, or maybe all three or two of the three. So it'll be determined by the nature of the particular study. And then a comprehensive e-research platform has been developed for all CTP initiatives involving your uh, well-known metadata array for electronic data capture. New to SWAG, um, uh, integrated clinical trial management, CTMS, and electronic trial master file, ETMF through Velos and Florence. And these tools, tools obviously um, will streamline site communications and startup efforts, house study documents, assist in management of investigator site files, regulatory requirements, as well as monitoring and auditing. Now, I'm not gonna read all these boxes to you, but remember that simple slide I showed earlier of, of three bars proceeding in parallel. Well, this blows it up significantly. And what I mean by our internal process, um, we have across here a, a company line and these boxes right now are generic, but each company will have their own types of reviews required at certain time points. And here is the scientific side, clinical, statistical, translational, budget, contracting, and electronic data capture and study build. <clears throat> what is really important, well, we have a, time, a timeline here once it's approved by our executive review committee. Remember I mentioned that this replaces an NCI steering committee peer review. This is peer review, rigorous, uh, and then it will be approved to develop into a protocol, and then we have a timeline that starts. You notice this is blank here for timeline, and that's because there are many different pop-ups that happen along the way as you're early in development. For example, a particular compound may no longer be available. Um, I could go through a long list of things. So what we have put into place here is after the initial interchange between the SWAD committee chair, or perhaps they've come to me, but we agree on the basic elements of study design. I, I do not do the scientific study design that's done by the SWAD committee chair and their teams. But the, the three pieces talk here and agree. And then there is a simple two page form that we have created going forward for our, our new collaborations. We fondly call it go, a go, no go form, but basically it's sent to the CTP's executive committee to review that it's feasible to proceed. So there we've had buy-in by all stakeholders in the development, and we will establish timelines for this part of the process with the company and with the study chair and with the committee chair so that we can expeditiously move to this point. So this is really a, a great step forward to have this roadmap spelled out and everyone on the acknowledgement slide that I showed at the beginning had a part in this and uh, we look forward to fine tuning it as we go as we have been. So in summary, we've had successful development and implementation of internal processes, operations, administrative, contracting, 
and statistics and data building, uh, upfront engagement process among SWAG committee chairs, industry partner and CTP, parallel study development timelines, which I've just showed you. And seven projects have reached a mature capsule stage, which is very exciting. And we are initiating our executive peer review uh, we should have them reviewed over the next six months, but we're starting in two weeks with the head and neck and squamous of skin project. <clears throat> and there are exciting new initiatives ahead with the companies we're still discussing, uh, potential collaborations. So we invite you to get involved uh, if you're not already. So that you can email us with your interests, applicable ideas, and our industry contacts, or you can email me directly, or you can visit our website. And I apologize, obviously, <laughs> the www belongs in front of SWAG on this slide. So we're um, done. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, and we're open for questions. Casey Dawson will be moderating the questions. Those of you, who are virtual, uh, you can um, use the chat. Please just use the chat. Uh, you will be kept muted unless uh, we need to ask you a question in follow-up. And then those of you who are in the audience live, please go to the central microphone, just identify yourself and state your question. And since I can't see anybody, always identify yourself if you're chatting as well, so we know who's, who's who. Thank you for your attention. Casey, you're on as moderator. Thank you. Yeah, we've got a question in the chat um, about using the CIRB. So um, it's from Arta Wood, and they're asking um, if said so not using CIRB. And so the answer is that we're going to be using WCG as a central IRB for CTP studies. Right. We have to keep a, a firewall between the NCTM uh, mechanism and our uh, industry-funded mechanisms that we're discussing today. That's one of the re major reasons. All right. Come on, everybody. I, I can't. Casey, you have an audience out there? We do. All right. Rev them up. <laughs> we're about to do the wave. <laughs> oh, I miss being there. Gosh, this is weird. <laughs> it's one thing if you're just doing a pure virtual meeting, but this is this is a, a new experience for me. Hi. <laughs> We've got um hi Dr. Albay, Michelle Brockman from Genentech. Yay, Michelle. Hi. <laughs> um, thanks for the update. So are you starting to build metrics on your program since you have some, like the head and neck one you described that have kind of gone seamlessly through your governance because it's the valuable pearl from the program is the speed in which you could do the development. My, ours is a different example because we're waiting on some things to come together. So can you speak to some of your timeline metrics? Um, you mean that part that's blank at the beginning? <laughs> yes, I, I mean, this one, this one was so speedy, I didn't know quite what to do with it. We, number one, we have a committee uh, study chair who's extremely efficient, bright. I mean, everyone's efficient and bright, right? But he was end of the bell-shaped curve. And I'll not acknowledge Dr. Swasicki, who's the study chair of the Head and Neck and Skin Project. Um, but that was part of it. The other part was we were already working with the same company in another um, disease site uh, that was having other challenges that were the fault of anyone. So we already had a lot of the early um, sign-offs and um, we're working with them seamlessly already. And I don't know, Casey, do you want to comment? Um, I think there's all sorts of reasons. We're going to be discussing tomorrow in the um, closed session with the scientific advisors about how to 
meet some of these challenges. Uh, I think with years of Genentech, it was very efficient. It's just we got bogged down by um, needing to, you know, working with a third company, so to speak, in two spaces, one, three spaces. Uh, we ended up working with you for one of the drugs, and fortunately, um, your anti tidget and now the FGFR, we're under discussion with third parties to our collaboration, and that raises a lot of other issues uh, and time. Um, some of the other studies had ctDNA, and that was, you know, who's going to fund it, and how is it going to be done, which companies... Uh, so that added a lot of time, is adding a lot of time to several of our other projects. I don't know if I'm answering your question, Michelle. And I'd just like to add that we are um, looking at timelines and measuring them and should be able to report out as we get further oh, along yeah. in the process to our partners um, and set timelines together that make sense to companies and um, CTP. Yeah, bear in mind, CTP is new in these platform studies. So we are, you know, to you who came on board as being the first, the first six um, companies, um, five companies, four, four, four companies, we had no baseline metrics to give you except on the NCTN side. So now we will have it. So for the next next project for a new company, we should be able to comment on the types of studies and what our timelines were. But I think we run into these issues with compounds and with those doing the integral biomarkers and bringing them on board and seeing who's gonna fund. There's just a lot of things behind the scenes you don't realize you have to do um, as opposed to having the NCI pay for the study. Uh, and you go ahead. So um, anyway, yes. The answer to your question is yes, we will. Are there, there's, I see some more chat questions, Casey, do you wanna? Yep, um, Dr. Bernard Parker is asking, any chemo prevention drugs being tested through this mechanism? Not yet, but we could. Uh, certainly, uh, Dr. Dawn Hirschman and her colleagues on the Encore side are involved in CTP leadership. Um, it would have to be something that could not be done through the Encore mechanism at the NCI. Um, but if ideas come forward from any companies, yes, we can explore, certainly. Good has asked an add-on question about CTP um, IRB. CTP covering IRB fees, and I can take that one if you'd like. Um, we're, we, we are um, considering that as part of the budget elements. So the answer is yes. So CTP is gonna include that as um, a budget line item for the sites. We've got, I, oh, go I, ahead. Oh, I, a chat came to me here. Uh, Oops. Well, this is a long uh, Roxanne Tapaccio. Do you want to touch touch hers there? It's in the middle of my screen. I don't see. Okay. Okay. Okay, here, I'll read it. While you stated at the outset, there will be no overlap or competition. I can't scroll down. Here, with federally funded clinical trials, I wonder about our SWAC trials that continue to struggle to accrue participants and site participation. While there are enough trials to go around, sites do have limited staffing. Might the SWAG sites who are informed of the CTP studies prior to activation potentially end up with a preference or bias for devoting their limited staffing resources to PPP studies over SWAG federally funded studies? Well, Actually, you know, remember the funding for your site, number one, will be, I would say, much more robust than you would get to be on an NCI trial. And whatever additional needs you may have, you can uh, address that through the funding on these trials. These trials are not going to compete for patients. Where they would compete is if your site does a lot of industry trials um, just ad hoc. 
So I think that if you can be part of SWAG initiative and also be able to not stress your limited resources, I mean, you're gonna to have to decide, but there are some NCTN studies that are struggling to accrue everywhere and that's not due to staffing needs so much as it is not having the patients. So what we're trying to do is get a trial menu that will be different from what you would have uh, on the NCTN side, complement it. I don't know if you're there, does that answer your question or do you have a follow-up to that, Roxanne? Are you live or, are, no, you're not live. You're, you're, do you want to unmute her? Can you do that if she has a follow-up? Roxanne Tapaccio. Oh, thanks, Dr. Albin. Can you hear me? This is Roxanne. Yes, yes. Hi, uh, thank you. I, I, it does answer it somewhat. Thank you. I, th I think my question, being someone who works as a data coordinator here on the NCOR studies for SWOG, is that oh, uh, we are we see often that um, some of our actual SWOG federally funded studies are struggling, not just with with getting the sites to be excited about the menu that we currently have offered on our current menu. So I think my question was more about sort of if sites think, oh, gee, I can get, you know, PPP funding that is more robust and maybe better than our SWOG federally funded trials for my accrual, maybe I will use my limited three person team to work up, um, you know, to, to work on accrual for these sorts of trial as opposed to the SWAG federally funded trials that, you know, they, they think may be, you know, older or, you know, not as exciting or maybe just not pay as well. I, I, I don't live on the site end, so I don't really know what the biases might be, but it sounds like even though there's no bias inherent in the system that we're offering with an expanded menu, the sites might end up with a preference, right, for a particular type of trial versus another. And that's that's what I was thinking of. Thank well, you. I, yeah, um, I think that the sites, at least our site, chooses what we open through SWAG versus elsewhere based on what we have as our denominator coming in our door. So, you know, I would submit, and we do this periodically, it's the trials that we're struggling along with on the NCTN side, we may choose to close if they're not, we don't have the patients coming in the door that fit it. Um, you know, in this, in this pandemic time, there've been staffing challenges and that creates other issues. And I recognize that, but I think that's true on both sides of the street. I don't view that as a bias. Um, there will be some uh, type of credit worked out for membership um, uh, on the Board of Governors, but I can't say much more about that. But um, for those that are doing a lot of CTP work. Casey, am I missing anything? I just don't wanna leave the audience with the, the view that we're stealing away from deliberately on the CTP side from the NCI side, we're not at all. I think the sites have to decide what studies they can support. Um, and there won't be, you know, if they have an adjuvant breast trial, we're not gonna have an adjuvant breast trial in the same, trial in the same space. Uh, but we may have one in a different space where they have a lot of patients, you see? So it's, you know, there are a lot of decisions that go into which trials are open. It, it's not just the money. We won't have a competing study where they'd pick. I could see there it would be an issue, but we're deliberately not doing that. Even not competing with ECOG Akron or all the other NCTN sites. So we're not just SWOG trials. Casey, do we have other questions? Three new messages. We do. What is the criteria for CTP taking on trials in disease settings where SWOG does not have disease committees? For example, head and neck. Ah, well, we just did that. And they're the first ones um, to the finish line of going to review committee. Um, so we have what's called a task force 
Um, the head and neck committee sits in um, Dr. Kurzrock's committee of early therapeutics and rare diseases. So uh, we um, had an interest um, from a member of Dr. Swasicki's interest was there and he had the proposal and we went through the channels and so that's how it happened. So, it, it, and then we're working with uh, a working group for CNS malignancies where there isn't a, a full committee also. So it's possible if there's a good idea. There is a question around timeline expectations. So the question is, do timeline expectations differ between phase two and phase three CTP trials from concept approval to activation? For NCTN trials, the target activation time is, is longer for phase three trials. Well, a lot of our phase two, so far we're not doing any just pure single phase two-ish trial. We're doing uh, these platform trials with multiple arms. So sometimes those take more time than a simple phase three randomization. So right now we will determine the timeline for each trial as we view it appropriate. Wants to know, are there any SWOG membership requirements to participate in CTP studies? <clears throat> yes. Um, yeah, you need to be a SWAG member to participate in CTP studies. Is that what the questioner is asking? Yes. Any other way to answer that, Casey? <laughs> um, no, <laughs> no. Basically, yeah, we are going to mm -hmm. open these trials to SWAG sites, social member sites. This is Christina Gardner. Are we getting your question correctly, Christina? Do you want to unmute her uh, IMS, please? If she's still there. This is Christina, can you hear me? Yes. So my experience, I'm, by the way, I'm the director of the Ozarks NCOR, and we have participated in a variety of studies through the research bases that go through their kind of external partnership relationship like this. Um, they have changed how they do it at some of it or do it in a different way. So for instance, with NRG, you can open a GOG partners trial without being an NRG member. And so sometimes what happens in that scenario is um, some of our sites that do participate in both industry and NCI trials, the industry team will actually open that study directly and not go through the NCOR. At other research bases, such as Alliance, that's not allowed. You have to be a member in good standing of Alliance in order to open their foundation studies. So I just wondered yeah. where this was going to sit with SWOG. Like Alliance for now. Okay. There will be some studies um, uh, where we may need for efficient accrual to invite um, some other non-SWOG but still NCTN members to join. For example, a high accruing um, place that does a lot of head and neck, for example, but not in SWAG, but in ECOG, I'm just making this up, um, could uh, become a SWAG special member in order to do that study with us. But um, no, we can't um, just let them do it the other way you suggested, Christine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Dr. Parker has a question. Um, Dr. Albain, an NCOR sites will not be asked to contribute through this venue for prevention studies, but they are allowed for industry funded treatment studies, right? No, um, NCOR studies, uh, well, if there are ideas that um, the NCOR cannot do through the, their mechanism with NIH, NCI, we would entertain them if they are rigorous scientific. Um, and, and Dr. Parker, feel free to chime in, but I think this is about the sites. Can you unmute Dr. Parker, please? Yes, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, so yeah, I was just wondering because um, you know, I you know, NCOR sites do uh, participate in treatment studies as well as uh, in uh, you know the typical 
you know, prevention and, you know, uh, symptoms management type studies. Uh, they, they are accredited actually for, well, let's just say in the past when we used to give credit for numbers of patients accrued to studies, they were accredited for uh, treatment studies. Now we have a different, you know, whole different way of, of um, you know, giving credit, if you will, for accrual. But I was just wondering if these patients, uh, the, the patients that are enrolled within your industry sponsored, within this mechanism rather, whether this would be allowed for treatments that through tr for treatment studies at the NCORE sites. You mean for treatment credits? Uh, well, I was just wondering if, yes, for, for treatment, well, pro probably not for treatment credits. Uh, that's, that's a good question. I would have to speak with, you know, Water McCaskill Stevens about that. But, no, um, they, no, they wouldn't get treatment credits. I didn't know if that's what you would, were asking. Well, no, I was actually Nobody. asking a real, I, I was actually asking a more simple question, actually, and that is, uh, and a very simple question, which was whether treatment studies funded through this mechanism uh, could be done at NCORE sites. At NCORE sites, and there, you know, it's like like treatment uh, protocols. A lot of these NCORE sites, you know, these smaller sites, they are looking for money too, you know, and well, they could do something are, like this. Are these, if these sites are SWAG members, I see no reason why not. Okay. I mean, I, we'd have, Casey, do you? would be sending feasibility assessments to the sites. And so if they fit the criteria for the study, I think they would be eligible to participate. Yeah. Okay, but not yeah. for, yeah, but this would not be the case for prevention studies. You, yeah, I remember you well, No, no, we're not. I answered someone's question about prevention studies earlier. Right that was now. me, that was me. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, but prevention, I, you know, we're not, trying to take over Dr. Hirschman's enterprise here <laughs> by any stretch. And she and I've talked about this. Your questions are, are good questions. I think if something comes up that just cannot be done through NCORE mechanism and it's prevention, it, we can explore it if it's rigorous, scientifically rigorous. Okay, so that's the flip side of your question. Can you, an NCORE site, open a CTP study, yes, if you are a SWAG member and, and you meet the feasibility uh, requirements. Thank you. Any more questions from the floor, Casey? Are they very quiet? Come on, you guys, gals. <laughs> Couple other... Are there more in the chat? Comments here. Um, Marta says there are some sites that use some of the better funding from industry sponsored studies to increase staffing levels, thereby enabling them to more actively participate in NCTN studies that don't compensate as well, trickle down impact, if you will. So I think that's going back to- We've answered that as best we can, I think, yeah. Um, I think all the things that we're opening now, if I'm looking at my own site here, we're, you know, card carrying, flag waving, waving SWAG site. It's our primary cooperative group. But none of these trials conflict with those. And since we will have funding to support our increased data management needs, uh, from the CTP funding, we will we can open these trials in addition to what we're doing in SWAG. Um, we're not going to close a SWAG study because something identical or similar in CTP is being opened. Um, this one from Christina. Uh, Gardner here, Casey. Uh, I don't know if we've answered it. Another one. We appreciate it when the IRB fees are paid directly by the study sponsor instead of being a budgetable item. Do you want to comment on that? I mean, the sponsor is not directly paying anything. We're paying 
sponsor will pay us and we will reimburse the sites. This is actually great feedback, Christina. Thank you for putting this uh, in the chat box uh, for consideration. We, um, as the study sponsor, will we're planning on including these IRB fees. The question for the folks in the room, um, we appreciate it when the IRB fees are paid directly by the study sponsor instead of being a reimbursable budget item. So I think um, talking about us as a study sponsor paying WCG IRB directly instead of flowing it through the site. So this is a this is helpful feedback um, that we can look at our process. Oh, I misunderstood. Thank you, Casey. Okay. Question about imaging banking. Um, what is the plan for imaging banking? Triad, other mechanism? Imaging banking, image banking and radiomic studies. Right. Um, each trial where this is germane is discussing this right now. I don't, we don't have a standard answer for this question, but yes, it is a hot topic right now. And um, I don't know, Michelle Brockman, you're in the audience still, if you are, can you comment about this? Cause we've been starting to talk about this with our bladder subtypes trial. See, I'd like to actually comment. Um, oh, please. <laughs> so we do have standard bank, uh, image banking processes here at SWOG and SWOG CTP um, will likely follow those same guidelines and standards that we use for SWOG studies. Um, of course, if it's NCI funded, we would have to fund it through a different mechanism. And so currently we're um, talking with IROC for image banking, but to Dr. Albain's point, I mean, each trial may need something different. And so um, we, you know, we will do what's appropriate for the study. I keep looking at your picture, Dr. Albain, but you can't see me. What? <laughs> oh, and Michelle. But I think if you are from the industry group, I mean, one of the things about this study is the funds for this trial are 100% coming from the pharmaceutical or from philanthropic sources like the Hope Foundation or other types of funding sources. So it's not like you can draw upon the funds that are there on the federal side. And so the mechanism you're repurposing, but the funds need to come from another source. And that might also be what the person is is trying to also understand, right? Is where are the funds kind of coming from, not just the processes? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, so you, to your point, Michelle, all, everything for CTP has to be funded outside of the NCI right. mechanism. So we would ask industry and or other sources for the funding. And Melissa, I don't know if you wanna unmute yourself and if, if we haven't answered your question. Um, it looks like we've got a couple other comments about budgeting, which I appreciate. Melissa said she's, we've answered her question, Dr. Albain, so I think we're all good there. I'm sorry, you have more comments? I have a couple comments about um, its feedback for budgeting consideration. So this person, Cheryl, says... Cheryl Dodd says sites would also appreciate it if sponsors pay for shipping of specimens. And that is um, typically a standard uh, line item in the budget in the event that the study calls for it. So appreciate that feedback. It looks like we're coming up against time. Yep. I think we've covered everything. I'm going through the, the chats. Um, I don't see that we've missed anything. If we have someone shout out immediately. Just one final comment. Um, I had left myself a note to write an advocate slide and I forgot it. So we do have, a, uh, CTP has a very dedicated lay advocate, Judy Johnson, who's part of a lot of our process discussions and also all of our projects uh, will then have a committee specifically advocate involved. For example, Rick Banks on um, the GU study 
Uh, so they are very important to what we do. And with that, I am going to thank everyone for attending, for bearing with this hybrid situation. I am jealous you are in Seattle and I am not, though the sun has come out. The rains are gone for the time being, but we expect snow on Friday here. So <laughs> you all have a great meeting and uh, feel free to email us. And thanks again for your help, IMS for your assistance and Casey for moderating in your usual expert way. Thank you all. Thanks everybody.